Okay, I have 6.05. Yes, I do too. Should we get going? Sure, sounds good to me. Awesome. Good evening, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us to What Can We Do With Girl Scouts and How to Connect With Girls in a Pandemic World. We're so thrilled that you're with us, and my name is Chris Worm. I'm team leader for the membership in the Lansing area, and I'm here with you tonight with my colleague and also a troop leader, Christine Ortman, who's also a team leader in Saginaw. Tonight, we're going to share some ideas and tips that we ourselves and other leaders have found successful in connecting with girls at this time. We are asking all participants to stay muted through our presentation and to type any questions you may have in our chat log. We plan to go through the presentation and then we'll review questions in the chat log for quick Q&A after the uh, presentation. I really want to start out and say we really understand that as things are changing in our world day to day, there are a lot of uncertainties. What we know for certain is that no matter what school looks like for our girls, the opportunity to socialize and connect with their friends will be very, very different. We also though know that for certain that Girl Scouts is here for you and also for your girls. Our sisterhood of support is something that we can all depend on for the social connections we need for our emotional health, for sharing the amazement and the joy as we discover new things. And just simply remember having fun together. So how do we make this happen? Let's share some things, Christine. Well, first, I'm going to start with sharing some friendly reminders. And, and I know that these are things that I'm calling them reminders because these are things that we do know. But sometimes it's good to just have a reminder for. So first and foremost, take a deep breath. When we are all feeling kind of anxious and overwhelmed, it's always good to just take a deep breath because for this, we've got this as Girl Scouts. Number two, uh, we already know how to do this. And you might be going, oh my gosh, Christine, what are you thinking of? I have never been through a pandemic before. I do not know how to do this. But in the reality, when we, we step back and we think about what we do as troop leaders, when you're planning a badge and you take out the girl guide and you look at what the requirements are, there's three requirements for every skill. You look at what one is gonna work best for your troop. And then you pick that and your troop adapts it to best work for your troop. So when we look at how we do that, every time we work on a badge for five skills per badge, we've done this a gajillion times. We've already done this so many times with adapting badges. And that's really what we're going to be looking at doing as we move forward through this pandemic and working with our girls. Number three is to set expectations. So while we might be looking at having our troop meetings in a different format, in our normal troop meetings, we do set norms. We do have a troop agreement to establish what the agenda is going to be for our troop or what to expect for how we behave and how we treat each other and when to talk and take turns. We set those things for our normal troop meetings. And so, yes, it is absolutely fine to set up these norms and expectations for no matter what format your troop is going to be um, holding their meetings from this point forward. And just like in a normal troop meeting, having those set up front with your girls so that they have that troop agreement, it helps them to get into the routine and, and to be able to get into a new groove as they move forward. Number four is to give yourself permission. Now, I know so many of you are ready to just, just bleed green and just go forth and do great Girl Scout things, just as we always have. And taking a moment to give yourself permission that as we move forward, it's okay that this looks different. 
It's okay if you feel like this is not going to be the same kind of meeting as it used to be. That's okay. It's okay if you used to meet in person twice a month, like every other week, and maybe you're adapting how you meet and how often you meet because that's going to work better for your schedule. It's going to work better for your family's schedules. That's okay. Give yourself permission to have those adaptations, you know, and making sure that we are also looking at what the girls' needs are at that time. Just as in a regular troop meeting, if you had, you know, the girls come together and they plan to work on a badge and everyone shows up and maybe they had testing all day that day and you know they're just, they're fried, they're zoned out. And so in a regular troop meeting, we might stop and take a pause to say, are we really looking to move forward with working on, I know we planned this, but are we gonna move forward on this today? Or should we just have something else that we do today and do that, do our badge work another day? We would do that in a normal troop meeting. It's okay to do that now. Give yourself permission. If you find that the girls really just need a meeting to socially connect with each other for that emotional support, that's your troop meeting. It's meeting the needs of the girls and that's really, really what this is in the, and the gist of all of this is really what this is all about. And five, remember the bigger picture. When you are finding that, you know, if, you know, taking this all in, this is a, you know, there's a lot of change going on. There's different things going on in the world that are all, always, you know, flexing and flowing and changing with school. If you're finding that you're feeling overwhelmed or anxious and stressed, first I'm gonna ask, Remember steps one through four. <laughs> and then uh, remember that, why, why did you join Girl Scouts? Why did you wanna do this with your daughter or, or your girl in your life? Is Usually it's because you wanted to share this wonderful experience with her and you wanted to have fun together. So remember that when this is starting to feel stressful and anxious, take a deep breath, and remember that. So if the, what you're doing in your planning is not feeling very fun, take a moment and say, wait a minute, how can I make this fun? How can this be fun for the girls? How can this be fun for me to engage with them in a fun way? And remember to ask the girls what they want and ask them to help you plan it because they have a great time engaging in that, having that girl-led process and what they're going to find they get the most out of is going to be usually way more than what we could have put together as leaders. I found I've had some of the most amazing meetings because the girls came up with the most creative ideas. And that is the big picture, having that girl-led process. And it also takes a lot off of your plate because they get to plan it. And and what better than, you know, having more time to your own life than being able to share that plan time. Next, I'm going to share uh, some reminders of communication. Some of these might be new, but um, some of these might just be some good friendly reminders. Number one, if you haven't done this already, agree on one way to communicate with the families in your troop. Uh, this not only simplifies things and makes your life easier by only having one way to communicate with your families, such as a private troop Facebook group or group me, group text, email, whatever your, your families all agree on. Um, this isn't to say that you won't ever use any other forms of communication or technology for certain things, but having one communication as your main source of communication is much easier. If you have a group that mostly is going to agree on communicating through a private Facebook group for the truth, and you have a family or two who do not use Facebook, talk with them and see if they would be willing to set up their own private Facebook um, page so that that way they can um, still be connected to the, the Facebook group and when they have posts on the Facebook, you know, the troop page, they'll still get those communications through their email or some other way. And then that way it does help to condense it down to one form of communication. 
Uh, two, a reminder of the importance of communication. So now is a great time to have that really kind and heart to heart communication with your families of your troop that this year is gonna be more important than ever before for them to pay attention to and to respond to communications. And in the past, I mean, we could probably let it fly that, you know, you put out some communication maybe on Facebook and you get a couple responses, but you could always count on that you're gonna run into those parents at the next troop meeting that didn't respond and you could catch up with them then. Having that reminder that we're not going to have those moments of, hey, I'm still going to see you a couple days from now and I'll catch up with you then, that it, it's really going to be important for them to respond because we really want the response. It's going to be imperative for us to get that so that we know we're making the best decisions for everyone's input. Number three, tag your it. Uh, just keeping in mind uh, that when you're, if you're using a Facebook page, which a lot of troops do, uh, a, some people have a lot of groups that they're a part of. And so just because you're posting something in the Facebook group does not mean that they're aware that you put it there. So if you um, just take a moment and tag the parents of the families uh, that are part of your, your troop, they will get a notification that you posted something and it just is nice because then they're aware that you've put that communication out there. That being said, be mindful of how much you're communicating. Um, as we all know, you know, we, we like those alerts. We like having good open communication, but if we were to get 20 communications in a day or in a week, that's a lot. That's a lot. So, Instead of having too much where it could get to the point that they're really not reading it, um, be mindful of what you want to share, be concise, um, having the communication simplified to bullet points um, in one communication to share multiple things, but keeping it nice and simple and concise will really help. Uh, for making sure that that is getting through to everyone. And five, be mindful of when communication happens. So planning ahead and um, help with the help of some digital calendars that give you reminders, that's helped me a lot as a troop leader. I know some other troop leaders, you know, you get busy with your life and you mean to send out that communication in enough time and life gets away from you. So having those reminders for ourselves so that we're not sending that communication the night before. If we're really having something that we're looking to plan ahead, we wanna give our families a week to two weeks. Um, and then, you know, even with the best of intentions, like we know we get busy and we mean to plan on it, but then life happens and oh yes it is, you know, today's Tuesday. I was thinking it was Wednesday already, you know. So if you give them a reminder the night before and maybe the morning of that is just a quick reminder, hey, we have this going on. It starts at, you know, the six o'clock tonight. That really helps our families to stay connected and supported. And Chris? You bet. If families of troop members are in agreement, um, for meeting safely in person. We think it's really important that um, you're going to meet in person, of course, and troops, curly troops with 10 or less people, including adults, are able to meet inside following the State of Michigan Executive Directives and GSHOM meeting guidelines. So make sure that you um, take into consideration and if you need some help, uh, finding those guidelines, we will we'll be sure to get them out to you. And a fun way to remember how far apart, I'm sure you see this little llama out here and we're going, what is that all about? Well, a fun way to remember how far apart six feet is, it's, it's the same as having an adult llama between people. So just think of that, see a big llama and by gosh, we can go ahead and do that. So let's move on here. So we're still meeting safely in person. Currently troops and service unit events with a hundred or less people, including adults again, are able to meet outside 
you know as well as I do, you can uh, go to the parks, you can go to your church uh, grounds. There's several places for girls that can meet. You can even meet out on a baseball diamond, something like that. But make sure that you're following the state of Michigan executive directors and GSHOM meeting guidelines. Christine? So if families of troop members have comfort levels other than meeting in person, uh, you want to think about to screen or not to screen. So when thinking about if you're going to have a virtual meeting or online kind of meeting, first of all, you want to consider if everybody can connect because when you, you know, if you're going to have it, you want to be able to have everybody join in. If they can connect virtually or uh, maybe they can't connect, you know, another option is to, you know, but if they can connect virtually on, online, but maybe they want another alternative or, you know, switching it up, having a group phone call or a group text at a designated time is a great option that a number of troops in our rural areas have found that have worked for them. And remember that it doesn't have to be all or nothing. That just because you've had a decision to have a Zoom meeting, you might have a Zoom meeting once a month and then you have a Facebook chat, maybe you have um, another type of format that you, maybe you use one format for a bit of time, maybe you mix it up with another format. Be open and flexible to what works with your troop and what works at that time. Uh, one troop shared that a mix of these works best for them with two meetings a month. One is a Zoom meeting and the other week they have related activities that they do with their family and then they share pictures and messages with each other on their private troop Facebook page of what they're doing separately but together at the same time. All right, move it. So no matter what remote format you're finding that works best for your troop meetings, movement is gonna be the key to keeping them engaged. So yes, you really want to have lots of movement, which seems like, oh my gosh, how are we gonna have a, a meeting if we are having to move around? Well, to keep them from just being in mass chaos, plan the movement to be there on purpose with certain activities of that you're engaging in for a talk session and then maybe have them run and go get something. Or maybe you're meeting for a bit, you stop the meeting, they go do something for a bit and then they come back. So having that movement planned in there really helps to keep them engaged and having that hands-on fun. Which brings me to uh, number two of hands-on component is a must. Learning by doing is uh, an essential part of our Girl Scouts experience. And at this time, it's just as essential. And we also know that having that hands-on learning is a lot more engaging and just a whole lot more fun. And not only that, invite their family to join in the fun. It's going to be a different way of engaging and having them engage in things on their own with their families what a great way for their families to share in the fun and really see what Girl Scouts is bringing to their life and being able to then bring that back to their group and have that social support, not only for the girls, but even, you know, that does carry over to their families too. So it's going to be a, a really great way to get everybody moving and involved together. So what might that look like? It might look like scavenger hunts and nature hikes that the families do together and share pictures of what they find as they check things off their list. Badge and journeys completed as hands-on activities um, instead of just paperwork. And such as drawing a doing a drawing tutorial being streamed on a troop Facebook page or in a Zoom meeting. And in, um, instead there are, um, sometimes there might be printed instructions to follow along and then later share their artwork. It might look like a movie watch party where everyone watches the same movie in their own homes, but
but together as a group using either Netflix Party or some way of streaming the movie through Zoom or their private Troop Facebook page. It could also look like a backyard camping event with their own family with certain activities to do on their own, but together at the same time. And then joining in together, maybe on a group phone call for a campfire sing along. So I'm gonna to talk to you for a few minutes about a badge in a bag. Creating a kit sometimes referred to as a badge in a bag makes the badge or meeting time into a fun hands-on activity or a project. The kit should have simple instructions for everyone to follow. That's the main key. We want everybody to be involved in this. You know, make sure that some of the supplies that you, that's needed for your badge in a bag are commonly found in the home. Maybe scotch tape, scissors, that sort of thing. But then you might have items that you won't find in the home uh, most of the time. So go ahead, measure out what you think might be needed and put that in the bag. I think that's a great idea to do so that they'll all be together. Girls could join in on a group phone call or a text to complete the project together. Have fun conversations together. That's a key while you're all doing it together or complete them on their own and share with each other later. Kits can be distributed by porch drops and that's a lot of fun. Um, the girls would love to see you or on agreed upon pickup locations. That will work also. Making it easier. So here are a few tips and resources to help making it easier with planning. Picking a theme to plan your meetings and activities around make it a lot easier to plan and allows for a variety of engagement and learning opportunities associated with that theme. A few examples some leaders shared with us is one is a camping theme where a kit was porch drop that included instructions and two paper lunch bags for making a nature journal with them. Uh, a checklist for a nature hike and scavenger hunt and three, a snack bag of some s'more milk trail mix. And then two weeks later, that group of girls, they did an evening of backyard camping with their own families on the same night and had a Zoom meeting to have a sing-along together as a troop and share about their nature hike. Another theme that was shared with us was a troop that was working on their cooking badge and they had a pizza theme. And so the troop leaders porch brought some pizza kits uh, which they made on their own at the same time and at the same day. And then they joined each other on a group call and had a pizza party and shared pictures of the pizzas that they made. Another third theme that seemed like a whole lot of fun and I would have loved to join in on this one. So if any of my troop is out there, hint, hint, this might be a good one we could try, um, <laughs> is a chocolate theme. Um, a kit was porch dropped with supplies for doing chocolate activities together and they shared pictures and conversations um, in a private Facebook event section of their troops page. They did a virtual roller coaster ride at Hershey Park and learned about how chocolate is made in Costa Rica. And then two weeks later, they had a movie watch party of Willy Wonka and of course enjoyed some chocolate while watching it. Volunteer toolkit. Yes, volunteer toolkit. You may have heard us refer to this in all kinds of resources. It's referred to as VTK. It is one and the same. This is, accept this is accessible to all of our troop leaders through your MyGF login and has so, so many planning resources for planning meetings, working on badges and journeys, uh, it includes supply lists and agendas and helpful resources. So uh, with your active membership, you can access Volunteer Toolkit and you can't break it. You log in, play around, look at what's available and the resources are, are wonderful to, to really um, to use just as they are or to inspire you to adapt on your own. And they've also included some adaptation um, hints for how to adapt them with the virtual meetings. 
And also um, GSHOM has a lot of ideas and resources that can easily be accessed on our, our GSHOM Pinterest account. If you haven't found that, we have a new board that we've also added for um, some interesting ideas and adaptations for our remote meetings and virtual meetings. We also have our, um, our virtual programming, which is a wealth of videos. And so if you haven't seen those, come check them out. Those are, are a whole host of videos that we've put together from our volunteers and our staff that go through all kinds of wonderful materials and badge and activities that are fun and engaging from, for all ages of our Girl Scouts. And those can be found on our GSHOM Facebook page, our YouTube channel, and under our, our GSHOM website under resources. Just look what we have accomplished. Oh my goodness. Here are some of the badges we have video content from our virtual programming. These videos are great to share with your girls as part of a meeting and as well as watching them yourself for inspiration. Just remember the girls just want to have a fun time and we've tried to make this just as easy as we possibly can. So please go out, look at our website and there's some great things in our Pinterest. So we want to thank you so much for joining us today. We'll take a few minutes now to answer your questions from the chat log. How to connect with girls in a pandemic world. We're so pleased that you joined us. We'll chat in a minute. Okay, well, let's see, it looks like Someone did some guided drawing with their troop. That's great. I love that, Ashley. What a great idea. I think that is super. And we have uh, one question about, can they receive a slideshow that they can refer to later? Yes, this, web, this, is, um, this session is recorded and we will be posting this on our YouTube page. And so that way it is accessible to you um, shortly after we conclude this. Anything else, Christine? That, that is all. Are there any questions out there? Hi, everyone out there. Christine and I had a great time and we're thrilled that you joined us and if you need us for anything let us know and also please remember our help desk they can answer a lot of questions yeah. out there yes thank you so much i did want to add um in i i did add some things for uh what we were referencing today in our session about the Netflix party and, and you know, streaming movies and the group phone calls. So if you're not so sure about how to have a shared Netflix party with your troop or how to uh, do a group phone call on like an iPhone or your Android, I did look up all those instructions and pin those to that Pinterest board so that those are resources all that you can find together in one spot. Please check out our re resources on GSHOM for you volunteers. There's a lots of great input in there. We're trying to make it just as easy as we can. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.